Drinking coffee seems to be a simple daily activity for many, but the chemistry involved is rather complex. My name is Luke Weingart, and I'm going to dive into how the chemistry is involved in making coffee. Understanding the chemistry of coffee from production to consumption is crucial because of the popularity, desired taste and smell, and possible health implications. Coffee is one of the most common drinks consumed worldwide. It can easily be brewed at home or purchased at your local coffee shop. According to Beans, approximately 60% of Americans older than 18 drink coffee. The average coffee drinker consumes three cups of coffee per day, which in total is more than 140 billion cups per year. In 2018, in the United States alone, 26.5 million 60 kilogram bags of coffee which were consumed. And there's an example of a bag. However, the United States is ranked 25th country in coffee consumption per capita, as shows in the chart right there. Coffee contains hundreds of compounds. Some are well known, but others may not be. Two of the compounds thought to impact human health include caffeine and chlorogenic acid. The Center for Science in the Public Interest stated caffeine amounts widely vary depend on the size and type of coffee. Examples of that are a 12 ounce Dunkin Donuts iced coffee contains 327 milligrams of caffeine, but a 14 ounce Dunkin Donuts hot coffee only contains 210 milligrams of caffeine. According to PubChem, caffeine has a molecular formula of C8H10N4O2 and acts as a psychostimulant drug. Caffeine binds to adenosine receptors and inhibits downregulation of the central nervous system. Caffeine has also been linked to anti-inflammatory effects. The Autoimmunity Research Foundation described chlorogenic acid as, being, as having similar effects of caffeine but being less potent. Chlorogenic acid has a chemical formula of C16H18O9 and is found in both caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee. Chlorogenic acid has an antioxidant properties that help prevent cell damages caused by free radicals. The smell and taste of coffee are some of the most appealing aspects that keep their everyday customers returning for more. According to Rubner, coffee beans are roasted until they reach a temperature between 210 and 225 degrees Celsius. Final roasting temperature has a big impact on taste and has a big impact on taste of coffee. Hundreds of compounds have been identified in coffee, but only a select few actually contribute to the taste. Coffee is largely consumed for the effects of caffeine, but the concentration in coffee is too low to be tasted. The main two components that contribute to coffee's bitterness are chlorogenic acid lactones and hydroxylated phenylenes. Roasting is responsible for breaking down chlorogenic acid into lactones that are responsible for the bitter taste in light and medium roast coffee. In other roasted coffee, lactones are further broken down into hydroxylated phenylenes, which provide a more apparent bitter taste. CoffeeResearch.org states that the smell of coffee is responsible for some of the flavor due to the taste bud stimulation. Nasal perception of coffee occurs when coffee is smelled through the nose. Retronasal perception uh, occurs when coffee is in the mouth or swallowed and certain compounds drift upward into the nasal glands. Odor activities values. An odor unit used to measure potency helps classify which compounds have the greater impact of, on the smell of coffee. Aromatic compounds are believed to have the greatest contribution on coffee aroma. Furons, pyrazines, and thiazoles also contribute due to their low odor, odor threshold. According to coffeeresearch.org, coffee is considered a weak acetic with a pH of 5, as shows on our pH scale right here. Acidity seems to be favored in coffee, but excess acidity results in coffee tasting sour. Citric, ac citric acid, malic acid, and acetic acid are believed to play a large role because they are found in high proportions in coffee. 
Schmerling explained the controversial impacts coffee consumption plays in human health. Moderate coffee consumption, which is four cups or less per day, leads to an 8 to 15 percent reduction in risk of, uh, of death. Reduced risk of heart attack, stroke, cognitive heart failure, type 2 diabetes, and Parkinson's disease is also seen with drinking four cups or less per day. Coffee consumption can lead to negative minor effects as well, including anxiety, increased urina urination, and impaired sleep. Excess coffee, which is above four cups of coffee per day, are associated with much more serious consequences, such as an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. However, high temperatures of above 149 degrees Fahrenheit, which is higher than the usual drinking temperature, has been linked to esophageal cancer. Coffee is part of a daily routine for a lot of people and is one of, and is one of the most consumed beverages worldwide. As seen, the chemistry involved is much more complex than people would like to know. I'm going to leave you with this. There's increasing evidence that moderate coffee consumption occurs health benefits, offers health benefits. And these are my references.